So far, I have learned a great deal about the basics of space engineers. Today, we're going to start putting them to use. So what we're going to do, we are going to build a ship. Our first ship. Now, the first thing we need to know is what is, does a ship require? What blocks are essential to make the ship work? Every ship at its core has the same fundamental components. And it allows it to function and those are thrust in every direction all six directions which is up down left right forward and back now on a planet you do not need a downwards pushing um, thrust as in pushing towards the planet gravity takes care of that one so you only need five directions in on a planet or on an atmospheric ship However, if you do wish to turn it over, except, you know, you know, if you're doing flips and stuff like that, like in your combat ship, you might want to think about some on the roof, but you can do it quickly. It's completely, completely up to you with your design. But requirements, absolute essential requirements, thrust in all directions, a manner of controlling the ship, so either a remote control or a direct control via a cockpit seat or a cockpit, or sorry, a control seat or a cockpit. Every ship requires a power source, enough power to power the whole ship. Steering, now we say steering as in um, a gyroscope. Now we'll go into a gyroscope a bit later on, but they're essential to allow you to move your ship around. And of course it requires tools for its task. So when building a ship, the fundamental question, the first question you ask yourself is, why am I building this ship? What is it going to do? What's it going to function, its role? So once you know the function, you know the answer to number five in the list. So you know what tools it requires for its task. That is going to help learn, uh, sort of guide your building. So you know what, sh what ship is going to be, you're going to build to the role of it. Okay, so once you know what the role, sorry, um, I'm re I am actually reading a script for this one because it's quite complicated and I don't want to get it wrong. Um, let me get back to where I was. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Right, first thing to do is learn how to start off. Okay, now starting a, sp a build in Space Engineers is not difficult, but it can be tricky. Okay. First thing I'm going to put my uh, crosshairs back on. There we go, some options. So we know that there are both large and small grids in Space Engineers. Okay, this is a large grid ship. It's a ship that uses large blocks. Okay, um, and this this is the fighter I showed you last time with the um, thruster types. This is a small grid. Because it uses small blocks. Okay, you can get large block versions or variants of blocks on a small ship. So this is a large hydrogen thruster on a small grid. So you see why we call them grids? Because if you just call them blocks, it would be very, very confusing. The whole ship is a small grid. This is a large thruster. On a small grid. This is a large thruster on a large grid. Okay, and this is a small thruster on a large grid. So that thruster is almost that small thruster is almost the size of my bloody fighter ship over there, or at least half of it. Do you see? That's the point. So a large grid is a large block ship, okay, using huge large blocks and a small. Ship, a small grid is a 
ship using small size blocks. You can have large variants of different types of blocks within each of the designated size grids. Okay? Sounds complicated, but it isn't if you just picture it as a small grid as a small ship, a large grid as a large ship. Okay? Now, again, I went off script and I've lost myself. So give me a second. No, 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 no. Okay, get starting off. So we decide we're going to build a small grid. Okay. Um, what I will do is I'll set this up. You have a few ways of start, starting yourself off in Space Engineers. Okay. Um, you can just float in space and place your block. Okay. Remember, I'm in creative mode here, guys, so I instantly place the block, right? And you could do the same things as I'm doing, except you have to build the blocks in survival, right? Right, so this is, you can just place the block. Here's the problem with that. Now, if you bump into it, there it goes. Bye. Have a nice time. Yeah? It's not secure to anything, so you need to secure it. First way is to get yourself a landing gear. Now, if you place it straight onto the large block like this, um, it will go to a large grid variant, right? You can you can attach to a um, asteroid, a large ship, or a large uh, a large station, a ship station. The way to to switch between the two is. You can select it again on the toolbar. Now, in this case, number four is my landing gear. Okay, so if I press that, it switches between the large grid and the small grid variants of the landing gear. Okay. One second. Right, one thing I do need to show you real quick is if I go to landing gear in the G menu, landing gear is here. On the right hand side, you see two blocks. Okay, one is a large block, empty, and one is a got a small section highlighted in it. If it has those, then it can be used in both. Okay, it can be used in. A large grid, which is this icon, and a small grid, which is this icon. Other examples would be um, the cockpits. Okay, the cockpits can be used in large and small, except the fighter cockpit, which is an exception. Okay, that only has the small grid icon, which means it can only be used in the small grid. If it has both, it can be used in both. If it only has a large grid like a refinery you can only use it on a large grid okay simple as that now first way to start off building a ship is to use a landing gear okay this is not always that easy in um, survival because in space if you place it wrong it floats away but what you got to do is just press the button again get the small grid variant Get it close enough to the surface so it doesn't switch to the large one. And then press it and select it. Now I can build on top of here, look, with small grids. Okay, small blocks. Easy. That's the first method, which is quite tr a little bit tricky. Here is a more straightforward method. Okay. Um, let me, why did that not switch over? Okay. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to place a large grid rotor, okay, like that, and you'll build it. And the rotors come in two parts. They come in the body, which is down there, and they come in the rotor head. Now what we're going to do is delete or cut off the rotor head, which comes up on the right-hand side when you look at it as the rotor part. So we'll cut that off. Be careful not to do destroy the rotor itself okay now we go into the K menu 
find ourselves the most the, the nearest interactable port and we type in rotor in the search there's only one rotor on this grid we know which one that is so we go to the rotor we go to the center panel and we do add small head there like that okay then we go back to our rotor and we would then finish building it now the rotor head the rotor body is large but the rotor head is a small grid we can start building on the small grid very cool right now one second so the most that, sorry I, I do I am trying to stick to a script on this one as I said because it's very important that you get all the bits and pieces of information on this building the ships is what the game's about so I want to get this bit right now this is a very simple demonstration of all the parts that you're going to require you require thrust in every direction a power source a gyroscope and a cockpit this is a ship believe it or not this is a ship right it works now if I show you I can rotate around and then there's most basic form this is a ship it moves and that's it it, it can rotate in any direction so there's no up and down really in space but there's only relative up and down so relative to where your seating position would be the easiest way to describe it so from where I'm sitting above me is is up and below me is down and I can I can easily traverse those axes and then you've got left and right you've got your you've got roll and you've got pitch your roll and pitch is all controlled by the gyroscope which I was talking about earlier so your is lateral movement like this roll is rolling and pitch is pitching the nose up and down then you've got like you can traverse strafe I suppose you could call that and then lift and lower easy right so that's basically what you require to make a ship right just that but we don't want to just make that single ugly little thing okay the most common first build in space engineers because it's what you come across that you require first is building a miner okay we are going to build a miner we're going to build this miner this is one of my very basic vanilla miners and we are going to build it okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set ourselves up right remember we use We use the uh, landing gear and we're ready to roll. Now, we need to start placing blocks. I usually, on most of my small ship builds, at least the small ship builds, I will put where the cockpit is. On a lot of my big, large grids, I will first either do the front end or, or, the, or the bridge. So that's kind of my, my thing. So now I have a cockpit. This allows me to sort of like figure out where I'm going to put everything else. Okay. And we are building in space. Now, one second. Um, right. We've got the cockpit. This is the fighter cockpit and we are building in space. Now, the, the, the pilot in there is going to require oxygen. Okay, you can either have it one or two ways. You can either just stock up on bottles. That's fine. That's the simplest way. Or you can actually have an oxygen generating system. Okay, The way we do this is we go and we get a, a, a O2 H2 generator. And we're going to need an oxygen tank as well. So to get the generator. And it's shaped like this. Now remember when we put it on the large grid, it's shaped like that. When we put it on the small grid, it's shaped differently. Now we must rotate these blocks in order for them to match up their ports. We spoke about ports, highlighted large port, highlighted large port. Now we need to line those up, right? 
I want to quickly show you or tell you about rotation of blocks in Space Engineers. Whenever you have a block in your hand, if you look to the top right, there is a there is a a ghost kind of block box with green and red arrows and little blue ones as well at the same time. That's telling you the block rotations. Okay, so if you use insert home page up delete end and page down they will rotate this block through all its axes okay and if you rotate them in diff different combinations you can get different bits of the block facing different ways why is this important well one we need to line up the ports that's a important there and two you need to line up certain things to be pointing certain ways, which we'll cover a little bit more in a minute with the thrusters. Okay, so that's the oxygen generator laid. We'll move into the rest of it now. This is the oxygen tank. Again, remember the oxygen tank on the large grid shaped like that. On a small grid, it's shaped like this. Again, it's got two small ports at one end and a large port at the other. Right, right now, the large port is touching the two small ports. That will not function the oxygen and everything and the ice and everything will not pass through this system so we need to marry up two small ones with two small ones and then we place the block remembering guys i am in creative i'm just placing blocks you guys in survival and later when you see me playing survival we will actually be building the blocks okay simple now this ship as long as we provide the front part of this with oxygen with ice will be will provide oxygen into the cockpit so the pilot will live yay that's that's a good thing and it also means by providing oxygen in the in the actual um, vessel it means the pilot can be out for longer he can go longer range if he's dependent on bottles he has a only a finite supply okay um by using a tank like this if you fill a tank one of these tanks it will take a very very long time to empty that tank okay understandably a two is a, a finite supply but without these systems on board the bottles cannot be refilled so it is a finite this one can be refilled with ice it's not infinite because ice is finite but you know there is a greater um range and length of time Excuse me, I need a quick drink. So we can now provide oxygen. The next thought is this ship is going to be a miner. It's going to go and gather a lot of resources for us, bring them back to our base, where we're going to put them in, turn them into uh, ingots and then turn those ingots into stuff that we need. Right? Because we've covered that before in processing. Here, we need cargo containers. Okay? In Space Engineers, uh, cargo containers uh, come in three different varieties. They come in small, medium, and large. Now, a small cargo container on a small grid is essentially worthless for storage. The only real use for it would be your personal storage, like ammo, bottles, weapons, and so on, tools. Because they are such a small capacity that you can... You can carry more than you can get in a small grid, uh, in a small grid, small cargo container. You can carry more if you set it right in the inventory, in the, in the beginning, right? So they're not that good. However, medium are pretty good. Um, they can have a good size and they fit in many directions, but they don't lack, they don't have a good capacity, oh, a brilliant capacity. They're very good. But you need more than one of them to make a decent capacity size. And then, of course, there is the large, which is this boy. Now, I'm going to put one large one there. It has a large capacity, but it is big. Okay, so you do need to worry, you know, change and look at your shapes and sizes of your, your ships, dependent on what you use. Okay, I'm also going to add two cargo medium medium containers 
There are a couple of reasons for this. One, it gives me an interesting shape to work with, okay, which is the back end of that. And it also provides me with um, the right ports facing the right way, which I'll go into in a minute. We also, so this is where all the ore is going to be stored, okay, in the ship. We also need to get the ore out of there into the um, base, right, into our space station, into the refineries. So we're going to add a connector there. Okay, we've discussed what those are before. These are a magnetic lock which can be switched on. When they're connected to each other, both grids then can share the inventory. So all the ore that's been stored in this will fly out of there, straight into the refineries, and be useful for us. Okay? So that's that's all the storage. Now, when you if you find that you're not getting the right ports to face you when, you when you're doing this, if you build the same ship as this, just go back and check your connections. On the back of the cockpit is a large port, so the first one should be the large port. Then the, the facing one will be too small, so you've got the two small, and that leaves us with the large ports and the large port. Okay? Then large ports are large port again. So you see, you just make sure that you've got the same ones and you should be fine. I showed you all in the um, automation video, and I'm not going to keep going on about it because it's not there. Right. We are going to add now some thrusters. Right? Because it's very important. We're very, very important that we have thrusters. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I will put. Now I think yeah, they sit on the lower part of that block there, like that. All right. Well, the way my ship is designed. Um, I need to add the drills now as well, because when I'm adding the thrust, I need the drill parts in the way. So I'm going to add the drills now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add these. These are conveyors, and I know you can use pipes, okay? But the point is, there's a, there's a reason that I'm putting conveyors in there, and I'll be showing you that later on. So, let's put these down. Okay, let's place these blocks. I think that's right. That's one too many. Let me just check the... Uh, it should be one off the nose. One off the nose, that's correct. I haven't built this ship in a while, so I had to build it again today. I've only just built it again so that I can remember how it all goes together. <clears throat> so now what we have, we have some storage, some tools. So the drills will, through the small ports, connect to the storage system. <coughs> Excuse me. And all the ore that we mine up will be stored back here. We also can provide oxygen for our pilot so he doesn't die. We can also transfer the goods out of the ship into the base. So we're starting to actually build something here. Now, I was telling you about thrusters. Thrusters are vitally important in space engineers, believe it or not. Without them, we don't go anywhere. But here's something that's, that's even more important to know about thrusters. Okay, Thrusters will burn anything that is in line with its flame. Okay, I'll say that again. It will burn anything that's in line with its flame. And that means that you have to be very, very aware of where you are placing thrusters, okay? You can't just slap them in and then cover them up and all this kind of stuff because they require you to actually think a little bit about your ship design. Because if you cover them up, they will 
burn their way through anything that's in front of them. And if you put a vital system in front of that thruster, you're going to lose that vital system. Okay? So let me just finish putting these on. Okay, there. Now, she needs thrusters at the front, braking thrusters. We have a huge amount of power at the rear, and if you only have a small amount of power at the front, it's going to take a long time to um, slow you down. So, yes, I need to finish off about thruster damage. Um, thrusters will damage everything around, as we have said, said before. Okay, um, you can switch that off in the setup menu. I wouldn't advise it, however, because most people play with it on, especially on a lot of servers and things like that. So it's good to get into the habit of thinking about it now when you start building your ships, rather than um, as a special one-off project doing it. I, I have done ships that I take that will blow blow themselves up if thrust of damage is on, but you just build that as a one-off special but you get used to your brain thinking i need to worry about the thruster block uh, the flame is at least the length of the thruster itself so this is two blocks it's going to come out at least two blocks even when it's idling it will look like just a flame there when it's called into operation it will extend the flame quite clear quite further out so make sure there's a clear area around all of the out the flame outputs okay now Let's get on with this design. What I need to do, it's a bit finicky sometimes because they try to, um, they try to snap to one of the other blocks. But just, just adjust your position a little bit. Is that in the right place? That is not. You can just adjust. There you go. Adjusted. Now, we need to put, I'm going to be putting some armor blocks down to help with my design. Because they can't just float in midair, right? So sometimes you might, when you're building the thruster section, you might need to put a little bit of armor in just to get things to go right. So we add all the thrust, okay, there are other skills in creative building such as mirroring and dragging and things like that, I will cover those in a different video. So if you see me doing something that you're not sure what I'm doing, don't worry. I will cover how to do all the little advanced techniques that I use in another video. Um, I'm used to this now. I've been doing it for a very long time. I've, been, I've got X amount of thousand of hours in space engineers. It comes naturally to me. I am trying to keep it very, very simple, very basic. But sometimes the um, techniques will creep in and I will do something you might think. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, everything I do, I will show you. I will show you all of it. Now, let's have a... Where are you going to go? Come on. There we are. Okay, so now we have thrust in all directions. All of our thrusters are clear. They're not going to cause any damage to any other blocks. And we, we can move in any direction, right? And we have the tools. Okay, now, this beast needs a beating heart. She needs some power, okay? We have a um, different variety of options available to us. 
we have solar panels, batteries, and hydrogen engines, okay? As well as, so let's show you this. I'll put these all on the large grid. That's a solar panel. There's a battery. There's a hydrogen engine. And there is a large nuclear reactor. Okay? Each of these have their own pluses and minuses. Uranium reactors need uranium. Obviously, they need to be fueled. Uranium requires that you find uranium ore, process it into ingots, and then power your um, creations. Now, that entails that you already have some support system in place. So uranium might not be the best starting fuel. Okay. However, by the time you come to be making ships, you probably, in space, will be already have found some uranium. So just bear that in mind that hopefully you would have found some uranium by now. If you haven't, then you might need to consider one of these other options. Solar panels, the, 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 the upside of that is it's free. You just build the panel, and when the sun's on it, you get power. When the sun's not on it, you don't. It's very simple. The downside is when the sun's not on it, you don't get power. And the amount of power that these things produce provide is pretty low however if you combine them with a battery during the day you have a vast array of on a space station or a large ship you have a vast array of solar panels charging a battery bank that you would use when the sun goes down that's a viable option but that requires a lot of space um, batteries are excellent they will provide power very cheaply they're very cheap they're not very expensive to build they do require some materials that uh, can be difficult to get hold of but they are pretty easy to build um, the downside of batteries are their weight they're heavy um, compared to how much they actually do put out so you do you will require numerous batteries on one grid now the problem with space and not the problem with space one of the challenges of space engineers is you have always got to be considerate of thrust to weight ratio because it's important. For instance, if I put this great monster over here and took off all of the side thrusters apart from one small one, it would take an absolute age for it to move in that direction. Or if we didn't have enough, we took all these large braking thrusters off. It would take forever for these little slow, um, thrusters to slow down this monster because each of these thrusters only exerts a certain amount of force. Okay, um, Not to get too complicated about it, but something that weighs something is pushed forward. It then needs at least that amount of force to slow it down. That's not exactly right, but that's how you can think about it. So if a thruster can only push out a certain amount of force, it takes a long time for it to generate or slow down the amount of weight okay, that's going forward. It, it's a lot more complicated than that in the real scientific terms, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to make it very, very scientific. But just think about it in the fact that the more it, something weighs, the more engines it requires to move it slow it down, speed it up, or move it in a direction, okay? So the batteries come at the price of being very heavy and cumbersome, and therefore they will can make your builds quite heavy. The hydrogen engine, um, in my opinion, is only really suited towards having on a rover, a land vehicle wheeled vehicle because its output let me show you on the ship over here 
this thing, if we put it on there, okay, go to control panel on this hydrogen engine has 500 kilowatts of output in power. Okay, 500 kilowatts, very important to remember that. Let's look at the ion thrusters. The small ones require 200 kilowatts. The large ones require 2.4 megawatts, which is 2,400 megawatts. So let's do a little bit of math really quick, okay, to work out how much, how many of those this little ship, just this little ship, would require, okay? So at 500 megawatts they put out, uh, sorry, kilowatts they put out, 500 kilowatts they put out. If we, we have about 40 thrusters on here, so 40 thrusters times by uh, 200 is 8,000 kilowatts, okay? Plus two large kilowatts at 2,400 kilowatts, which is 4,800, added together makes 12,800. We divide all that by 500 kilowatts, which I worked out earlier, comes to 25.6. It thus means we require 26 of these engines, 26, to run just this sh small ship. Can you imagine putting 26 of these things together to run this small thing? It would make this ship ginormous. Okay? Added to the fact that you require um, you to make this you to make this run, you require a um, oxygen generator and a hydrogen tank. Okay, yes, we do have an oxygen generator on board this ship, but let me show you the size of the small ship hydrogen jet tank. That thing is huge. Okay. So again, we are making, if we wanted to operate with those, that up our power system, it would be horrific. It would mean this thing would be gigantic. So for the power output of those engines, it's just not worth it. Okay? It's not worth it. So, but for a land vehicle, <laughs> excuse me, but for a land vehicle, it's absolutely ideal because they don't require a huge amount of power to push them and they require to move the wheels. Okay, so let's get rid of all that. I have chosen to go with uranium power and I've gone for the small reactors and a lot of them. Now this small reactor on here only has one port, you see? Can you see that? So I'm going to line these ports up with the port on there. I'm going to press control and I'm going to drag out a line. In creative, if you hold down control, you can drag a line of those out. And I'm also going to drag out a line there. Okay? And I'm going to do the same on the other side. It's going to give me a hell of a lot of power to keep this thing operating. Okay? I've got a lot of small um, reactors there that will keep this ship operating. Good. One thing I need to know, need to make a um, particular note of here, is all of my um, reactors will be fueled up when the base is connected. So if I connect to the base and it's producing uranium ingots, or it's got storage of uranium ingots, it will refuel my ship. All of these are connected to the system that we spoke about in the automation. Right? So therefore, it will power it. It will, sorry, refuel it. However, if you run out of fuel, or when the ship is being first built, this is in creative, so you don't require fuel in creative, the ship won't have any power, and the Transport system, the, the conveyor system inside of here requires power. Okay? Now, I always use what I call a cold start um, as part of a system. Now, what I do is I place a battery on the ship. Okay? Like so. Put two on here. And that battery 
will be placed on charge. So we go in here, we find the batteries, and we place them to recharge. Okay? Now, if I run out of fuel, and I manage to get all of some ingots, and I come to the back and place them in there, because we know by placing it in the connector, it is then accessible by the rest of the ship, right? Nothing will happen because the conveyor system needs power. The batteries are there for a cold start. So what you would do is you would come up to the ship, you put the, the, the ingots in the uh, connector, you jump in the, in the cockpit, turn the batteries from, um, from recharge to discharge, the ship would come to life, the fuel would be sucked from the conveyor uh, connector into all the reactors, <laughs> You could then put your batteries back on recharge for the next time. Done. Your ship started. Okay. Now, there's another thing I want to cover here really quickly. Is it's a bit of a pro tip. Th always be thinking. Okay. Um, about your plumbing in. I'm, I'm using air quotes, no camera. So, you know, smart move. But anyway, um, you're plumbing in, you're piping in of things. Now, if you remember, I used conveyors, and I said there was a reason I did that. The reason was, is that I could then put these reactors connected to it. So those conveyors have ports on all sides, as we've discussed before. And there is a straight line of them running to the back of this drill. This drill will hit the, mine, the, the face of the asteroid, at the rock face, and it will grind it up, gather all the ore. The ore will be passed down into these containers, which when we connect to the base, will come out of there into the base and be refined. However, that works both ways. As I said earlier, the uranium fuel rods or uranium fuel ingots will come in and they will pass down here and be passed to each of these reactors in turn, refueling it. So I have that plus my oxygen system, which means ice can also pass through into here and be processed into oxygen. Okay, so everything can be processed through one line. That's why I call it, you call it one line. The problem is, if you take damage, bounce off a rock, get attacked, and you sever this line, any system connected to that line, if it's multiple systems, will be broken, and you won't be able to use them until you fix the line. You can have um, separate lines for everything, but on a small ship, can you imagine if I had separate lines coming in for all the power, for the oxygen, and, and you'd be just making, again, the ship would be huge and out of shape. And, and you know. So if you want sleek, compact designs, you've got to, you, you know, again, it's down to your imagination. What you want to do with that ship, how you see that ship working. If you want a big colossal block, put everything in, do it. That's fine. That's space engineers. You can do what the hell you like with these ships. But if you want to build compact, efficient ships that work, and you want to try and experiment with some of your um, creative ideas, then some of these tips will come in useful. Multiple systems on one line works incredibly well. However, you are susceptible to damage. Okay, And on a large grid ship or a space station, you can have as many lines coming in as you want. Okay, so that's that. This ship has a beating heart, she has some teeth, she has some thrust. Essentially, she's a ship. Okay, we do need to add something else. And if you can remember from the list what it is, let me just get rid of that a minute. Put the wrong block in. I'm just filling these in. What we are missing is a gyroscope. Okay. And a gyroscope is essential. What a gyroscope gives us is not just the your pitch and roll, as we discussed earlier. It also activates what we call the inertia dampeners. And inertia dampeners are, basically, if I was to jump in this ship, the one that we built earlier, the little 
little uh, crappy thing here. Let me get up here, out the way. Now, if I was to turn my inertia dampeners off, remember right back at the beginning when I did the hard nothing, I told you where that was. You press Z, and down in the bottom left there, that icon has turned red. Now, my dampeners are off. If I press thrust forward to 10 meters per second, I will now continue at 9.4 meters per second, because that's where I stopped, for eternity, because there is no friction in space. What inertia dampeners allow us to do is I put them back on, it gives me counter thrust automatically so that my my natural state with inertia dampeners on is at rest, at stop. Okay, and your thrusters will always try and stop you, make you stop. If you have them switched off, you will continually drift. Now, on a planet, if you turn your inertia dampeners off, your lifting thrusters will not counter gravity and you will slam into the floor unless you constantly press spacebar to go up. But then you are going up constantly and you can't really fly and it just becomes a bit of an issue. You can't hover and things like that. So, inertia dampeners, incredibly, incredibly important. And they are managed by the gyroscopes. So let's put on two. Now, some people will say you don't need two on a small ship this size. And they would be right. If this ship was just as it is, you wouldn't require two um, gyroscopes. I'll cover a little bit more about how many gyroscopes you can use in, in a later episode, in a, in a wrap up episode, because I don't want to get too far into it. But just know that they are strong and they can move you around. And here's the thing on my design. Yes, at the moment, one gyroscope could throw this ship around quite easily. But that's because it's empty. Remember, we have a lot of storage here. We're going to be carrying a lot of weight through ore. So when it's empty, yes, it's easy to throw around. But what you need to do, what you need to remember, is it's going to be full up with rocks. So that's why there's two. Right? Cool. Okay, so we're going to be off in the wild blue in the deep black, whatever you want to call it, okay, in space, we're going to be looking for ore. So it would make sense that we had the ore detector. I've covered that one before. Depending on the amount of power you put into this thing is how much um, range you're going to find ore at. Okay. The other one is a antenna. Now, antennas are not essential. Okay. They're not essential at all. <coughs> but they can aid you in finding your ship if you get out of it for any reason. And sometimes you do have to get out of your ship um, to go and find something or whatever. Um, the antenna will aid you in finding your ship again. Also, it'll aid you in being identified by people in your faction by friends, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's a lot of other bits and pieces, but for now, just know that the antenna helps you find your ship and it helps you identify who you are and who you belong to, okay? There is also a beacon, but the antenna is much better because it has other uses. All right, there she is. It's a ship. This is a ship. Done. It has thrust. It has control it has um, steering it has uh, the tools it requires what else does it need what else does this thing need it has thrust in all direction it has a manner of controlling the ship a power source steering and tools exactly what we said at the beginning of this episode is what we needed for a ship so that is a ship now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a skin, okay? As with everything in Space Engineers, there are options. You have heavy and light armor. Now, as the name suggests, heavy armor is heavy, but it can it can soak up and sustain itself over a vast amount of damage, okay? But again, we go back to the thrust weight um, ratio. 
the more weight I add to this ship, the more thrust I need. The more thrust I need, the more power. The more power is more weight, and blah, you get stuck in that cycle. Okay? So, I'm going to use light armor. It's not as durable as heavy armor, but it is light. And this thing is only going to be a minor, so hopefully it's not going to be in the combat. And that's essentially it. So, I'm going to put a skin on. This is a square block game. Okay? Um, but you can create some very cool shapes. Now, you're going to see me using the one and one block, which means it's a one by one block. It covers one block in all directions. Okay, there are also in Space Engineers some multi blocks. Um, these are essentially two blocks or multiple blocks to make up one. And in Space Engineers' case, I can't think of anything that's more than two blocks. Um, so that has two parts to make a slope. That's there. You see that one and that one there. Okay. Now, the difference is, if you can see the different tapers of, of, of slope there, this is a one-by-one one slope. So this is a slope from a normal square block. Um, remember, if it's got the plus sign on it, you can use your scroll wheel to scroll through the different types. Okay. And this is a slope from a one-by-one, one which covers a slope sloping distance up one and across one basically <coughs> so over the distance of one block you rise one block these over the distance of two blocks rise one block so it gives you a nice smoother slope and also you can mix them up and make some interesting shapes some of these blocks go together very well for instance if you place Something like this. That block is a cut out in indented corner. Um, inverted corner light armor. Okay. And then this is a light arm armor corner. We put those in and look, we have a triangle. So yeah, in a square block we could build that. But if we continue that shape out, we're starting to make something that's resembling like a, a beginning to curve around in a neat way. And if we keep that going in all directions, we end up with some neat shapes. Now, I'm not going to tell you all of them. Okay, you can connect two. Sometimes you can use, um, you might want to use only one part of the multi-blocks. You might want to put different blocks together to make different shapes. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Because that is for you guys to discover for yourself. All right? So this only needs to skin out. That's all. That's what I call it. You go skinning it out, place the blocks on it, and it becomes this. The only difference is that I have two landing gear at the back. Okay, which makes for a nice smooth landing. That is essentially the same ship. Remember, you have an underside, so you need to go. You might need to unlock the ship. The the the, the landing gear. I've forgotten that one for a sec. And look, this is a ship. You can use it as a ship. It goes up. So then you can place all the blocks underneath. Okay? You can create different shapes. And if you notice, I've used all these different shapes here. It's a very basic, very, very basic ship. It's got some neat little lines on it. And it looks, you know, kind of nice. Right? So once you've done that, remembering to not block in the thrusters you've done it you've given your beast a skin you've done it you have achieved everything that this episode set out to show you how to build your first ship well done you that's it you've done it so up to this point you've learned so much about the ins and outs of space engineers the differences what can be provided. Now I'm starting to show you how you can use all of those tools to start to craft your own ships, craft your own designs. That red one is made by somebody at Keen. That blue one from somebody at Keen. This, this is mine. This is mine. If you go to a workshop, you'll see hundreds, literally hundreds and thousands of different designs of ships and stations. You let your imagination run wild. Okay, the next video in the series is going to be um, about 
utility ships. Okay, so I'm going to show you some more roles that you can build a ship in. So we're going to cover. It's going to be a, very, a lot shorter than this one. This one we covered a lot on how to build a ship. And basically, in the next one, I'm going to show you how to what to, kinds of ships you can build and and how to op and not all of the ships types, just some of them. And how you can optimize different things and so on and so forth. But for now, big love from the big Brit. Well done, you. You've just built your first ship. I will see you in the next video. Ta da! Thank you.